All right, we're going to talk about our last type of um, equilibrium uh, capital K value, and this is going to be solubility equilibrium, and it's going to be KSP. Okay, so we've got KA, KB, KW, now we've got KSP. Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about. Now, it's going to relate to solubility. Now, as a salt dissolves in water and ions are released, they can actually collide and reform the solid. So, this is another situation where we haven't necessarily told you all the truth because what you actually get is some of the solids that reform. Um, equilibrium is reached when the rate of dissolution equals the rate of recrystallization, or in other words, how fast it dissolves and how fast it reforms. And the reaction that we write is really just our net ionics equations that we started to write a long time ago. For example, calcium, calcium fluoride which would dissolve into the calcium and the fluoride ion Again, emphasizing the fact that we really have this backwards arrow, and we can figure out how much will dissolve. Then we have a saturated solution. Saturated solution is where no more solid can dissolve at equilibrium. Okay, that one's, I think, pretty straightforward. All right, now here comes KSP. Solubility product is KSP. KSP is a reflection. Now remember, it's not going to include the solid. Okay, so it's just a reflection of how many ions are formed. And as a reminder, why do we leave out the calcium fluoride? Well, it's solid, so we don't include that. Um, but adding more solid will not affect the amount of solid that can dissolve at a certain temperature. Okay, we've talked about this, that the capital K's are temperature dependent. Um, the same goes for KSP, which makes sense, because if you heat it up, more of it's going to dissolve. Um, it would if you heat it up, it would increase both reverse and forward reaction rates, because there's a greater amount on there as well, okay, of movement. All right, so KSP values, here's a chart in your textbook. Um, when you're doing the book problems, you're going to want to probably refer to that. I don't have the page number in front of me, but it's table 15.4, and it's just showing you these are the what are called KSP values. Okay, so it gives you um, a reflection of what the product of those two ions, when they're dissolved, um, can be. Okay, so uh, we'll go from there. And I'm just looking at, if you look at some of them, um, you know, some of them are, it, it's going to vary depending on the solubility. This is, in essence, the math behind the solubility for these things. Okay, so all those solubility rules, this is where those come from when we talk about totally soluble or not soluble. Okay, so if we have copper 1 bromide has a solubility of 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter, 25 degrees cel Celsius, find the KSP value. Okay, the solubility tells us the amount of solute that can dissolve in one liter. So if we use an ice chart, the solubility will give us, can can give us the x value. Okay, now it's not, this is not important. I'm just going to put it on here because when I try to skip it, um, it just doesn't go well. So I'm going to just leave it on there, kind of like we leave water. But remember, your solubility gives us the x. Okay, so we can find the KSP of being, um, and they're both ones, so that doesn't change it. So KSP is just the product of the solubility, hence solubility product, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 8th. It's still capital K, so there is still not a unit on those. Okay, now KSP value for oh, copper iodate, I think. Um, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7th at 25 degrees Celsius. Calculate the solubility. So this time we're going to work backwards. And it's no different, except now we're solving for the X with the ice chart. Okay, so we're just going to work backwards, because if we're given the KSP, we can figure out how much will dissolve. So our KSP, notice you've got a 2 for a coefficient, so we're going to have 2x here. Um, so our KSP value is just x times 2x squared, so 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7th is equal to 4x cubed. My x value, value is going to be 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 3rd moles per liter. Okay, so if we're looking for the solubility, um, you know, that gives us our x values for those. Okay, now if you can compare, you can only compare solubilities using KSP values for compounds containing the same number of ions, okay? It's not an across-the-board comparison um, because, as we know, the number of ions is going to change it. And, you know, for example, calcium sulfate is going to be larger than calcium, you know, so all of these all give off two ions. So for KSP values here, Calcium sulfate has more, um, ion, more is more soluble than copper to carbonate. That's more soluble than um, silver iodide. Okay, so you can compare them when it has the same number of ions, but you can only compare using actual solubility values when the compounds um, 
or the X's have different number of ions. So if you look on page 750 to 751, that'll give you a little bit more detail on that. Okay, so here, you know, for example, again, calculated solubilities for copper 2 sulfide, silver sulfide, and bismuth sulfide. Um, solubility of a solid is obviously lowered when a solution already contains one of the ions. So, for example, this is just the common ion effect. If I am trying to dissolve copper 2 sulfide, and if there's already silver sulfide in there, it's not going to dissolve as much because it's going to force it um, to go backwards. So it's going to minimize um, how much solubility they can have. Okay, well, Le Chatelier's principle will drive the reaction back towards the solid side. Okay, if we look at the solubility of calcium fluoride, if the KSP, and it's in a 0.025 molar sodium fluoride solution, this is just adding in a common ion effect. So the only thing that's going to be different, the solid still doesn't count, your 0.025 is going to go in for your initial concentration right here. Okay, so we're still solving for X. Um, at least we don't have to worry about fractions on these. So we're going to go ahead and um, this time, since our solubility value is so small, we're going to go ahead and get rid of the 2x plus. It um, comes out to be 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th. 5% rule checks out. So our x value is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8 moles per liter. Okay, now pH can affect solubility simply because of the common ion effect. Okay, if I have magnesium hydroxide, a high pH would affect solubility. A high pH will have a very high hydroxide concentration because high pH means that it's basic, so it will decrease the solubility. If there's more um, hyd sodium hydroxide, it's going to drive the reaction back this way. Um, for example, silver phosphate, um, what would happen if we added hydrogen ion to the solution? Well, hydrogen ion is going to attach itself to the phosphate to make phosphoric acid because it's a weak acid. And so if you're pulling away more phosphate, it's going to force it to the right and the solubility will increase. So you can see all of these ideas with the Chat Le Chatelier's um, allow us to actually shift the directions the way that we want them.